What's up, cooks? It's Wednesday. Today we have a new stand mixer in the house. This is from Vivor, and it's 7.4 quarts, right? So we're going to give this the old Amy Learns to Cook uh, test and review and see what this baby has to offer. So what's up, cooks? It's Wednesday. Let's try out this Vivor stand mixer. Okay, I love Wednesdays because we get to play with gadgets, right? We have a mixer from Vivor. It has kind of a unique look to it, so I figured we'd try it out and see what it has to offer. I'll put links down in the description to this mixer so you can check it out. Check it out. Uh, thanks, uh, Vivor, for sending this. I really appreciate it. So let's have some fun today, right? It's Wednesday. And we have a new mixer in the house, which is my favorite topic, right? for, especially for Wednesday. So, oh, okay. So this has got another box on the inside. I better turn it over, right? So you guys like playing with mixers? Because I know I do. <laughs> I love mixers. It's my favorite. Favorite subject in the kitchen. And the stand mixer is such a vital tool for any cook, professional or home. It's like up there on the top, right? Oh, okay, so we got some interesting goodies going on in here. Um, I didn't realize that it actually came with a slicer shredder. Huh. I'm always getting surprised. So this is a slicer shredder to go on the mixer. Huh. That's an added bonus. Um, so you put this on the mixer hub and it comes with a large grater a more fine grater and it has a slicer and it has a chute. A chute. Is that the feeding tray? Doesn't go with this, so. Oh my gosh, this mixer has more than I thought it did. Whoops. So this mixer also comes with a meat grinder. So it comes with the slicer, shredder, and the meat grinder. I had no idea this comes with a grinder as well. So here's your die, here's your cutter. That's pretty cool. So and it goes here. I wonder if they have other dies. Whoa, okay. You're gonna rotate upside down the little sidewalk. Everything is in this box. <laughs> Instruction manual. Has a little scraper. Um Pouring shield. Yeah. Whoa. Careful. Okay. Okay, so let's see what we have here. This is like a 7.4 quart mixer, so it's like almost an eight quart. Seven and a half quart. I like that it has that. Um, this 
this is kind of a hefty mixer. It has a unique look to it. You guys ready? Oh, I did. Ooh, it's a clear bag. One, <laughs> two, three! Yay! Yay! I'm <laughs> a weirdo. Okay. So, in here, we have the plunger for the meat grinder. Ding, 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 it's got the spring. It does? Yeah. It got plunger for the meat grinder. It has more dies for the meat grinder. Um, I'm not sure what this is for. Is that kind? I'm not sure, I have to look at the manual. So we have, ooh, a stainless steel paddle. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A nice whisk. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. And a stainless steel dough hook. Ooh. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. And a big bowl. Okay, so we're gonna judge the mixer on the standard Amy Learns to Cook categories. We're gonna be looking at the overall look and feel. That's the fit, the finish, how I kind of feel as a cook um, about how this looks. It is a very subjective category. We're also gonna be looking at the whisk. We're gonna do some whipped cream. We're gonna use the paddle and make some cookies and the dough hook to make some bread dough. So the overall look and feel. So this mixer is kind of interesting because at first I thought it was a plastic body mixer, but after, cause there was nothing in the description that described it as being all metal. But after I got it out of the package, this thing seems like the body of it is metal to me. Um, there are some plastic elements, like there's a piece of plastic down here at the bottom. There's plastic down at the bottom where the suction cups are. And I think, This piece here is plastic, but this is all metal. And there's a spring here to hold the tension on the accessories. Ding, ding, ding. The bowl base is also plastic um, down here. But one interesting thing is this has a fermentation function. So you can proof your bread in here. This gets warmed and it'll proof it right in the bowl that you mix it in. So that's kind of interesting. So the way this mixer works, it's hard for me to see for this side. There's a little button here that um, you raise and lower the head. The mixer does have a hub on it. This is a proprietary hub, but this machine does come with the meat grinder and the slicer shatter, which is really interesting. Um, a lot of people aren't necessarily always into a bunch of these attachments. I don't can't say that I use them a ton. They're fun to have. The slicer and shredder is fun to have, but it's not like the attachments are like a big deal to me. So this mixer has a digital display and it has a timer that will count up or down depending on how you configure that. It also, if you hold on to this gear for three seconds it goes into an of uh mode and that is your fermentation function you just hit it again it'll go back into mixer mode so really quick Give it a little listen. A little listen. So these are stainless steel uh, uh, paddle and dough hook, which is really amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this. And I'm just gonna put like two speed. Oh, sorry, I had to turn it. <laughs> So 
Johnny Mixer. Um, so my feeling for the overall look and feel. I was really surprised when I saw these extra attachments. I didn't know that it came with that. I was actually surprised that this is a really sturdy body on this mixer and it has a unique look to it. Like I'm not used to like, you know, this kind of lever for the, um, for the tilt head. It just has kind of a, a unique look compared to a lot of stand mixers. I kind of like mixers that don't quite look the same as all the other ones. And it has a kind of neat shape. So it's an interesting mixer. I'm looking forward to trying it out. So let's go. First up is the whip or the whisk. And we're going to make some whipped cream. So I'm going to put a pint of heavy whipping cream in here. And we're going to see what this baby can do. It's pretty quiet sounding. I'm going to put some powdered sugar in here and we'll finish it off. Sweet. Looks good. That gets an A. Okay, it's time to make some cookies. <laughs> so we have our paddle and this is a stainless steel paddle. <laughs> and I have two sticks of butter in there. And I'm going to go ahead and add our sugars so we can cream this. I got white sugar and brown sugar. Let's see how this baby creams. Gonna need to do a little scraping. Not too bad. So I'm only doing a single batch, and this is a really big bowl. I thought for a minute I would do a double, but I just didn't want that many cookies. So we're doing a single. Okay, let's get some peanut butter action. Mm. Peanut butter action for peanut butter cookies, right? Mm pop a couple eggs in here.
very nice. I like the looks of that. Beautiful. So we're gonna add a little bit of dry ingredients, flour, salt, baking soda, and baking powder. Turn it down so I don't get a puff in the face. Puffed it up on the side. That was probably my fault. Very nice. Beautiful dough for some beautiful cookies. Look at that. Awesome. The mixer did a great job. It was nice and quiet. It handled it, no problem. I could have done a double batch in here. So it gets my thumbs up. Okay, challenge number three is some bread. We got a dough hook, and this dough hook looks spiral, and it looks stainless steel. <laughs> So I'm doubling my dinner roll recipe. You can make this into dinner rolls or bread or whatever. I'll put links down in the description. Um, we have water. I'm using saff, instant yeast. I'm using some olive oil and I'm using some sugar. Putting my salt in the flour. Let's rock and roll. Putting it on two. This is a double batch. I figured since it's a seven quart mixer, we might as well have some kind of fun with it, right? We'll let this go and see what happens. So this has been going about nine, 10 minutes. I left it a little more hydrated just to see what would happen. Um, so let's get this out of here and we'll see what this dough, how this dough looks. Okay, so I'm gonna give our board a, just a little bit of olive oil and And get our dough out of here. So I kind of feel like this could have even done a triple batch because the, the motor was nice and smooth. It didn't like hesitate at all. It seemed to have a lot of power. Has plenty of room. Has plenty of room in the bowl. I really think I could have done a triple on this. Um, very nice dough. When I squeeze like this, I can feel a little bit of that dampness. Wow. Very nice. So what I think I'm gonna do with this dough is I'm gonna put it in the fridge, let it ferment overnight and do a cold rise. 
then take it out and ferment it in the mixer. So I might give you a little shot of that to show you how that is when I do that tomorrow, right? But wow, yeah, this looks really nice. Really nice dough, really nice cookies. Um, I really don't have any major thing to say. It has a little kind of bit of a high pitched noise there, um, but it was nice and smooth. It was quiet. Um, for a budget friendly mixer, this mixer is pretty decent. So I hope you enjoyed this, and um, I'll give you a little shot of the bread when I'm done. Uh, happy Wednesday, y'all. Well, I put the bread in here and put it on a proofer cycle, the fermentation cycle, and whoop, yep, it doubled in size. 